Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today, gonna be cheese compilation number 96. Should be an excellent time here. We're gonna start off on Royal Blood between Brock Daddy and Suryu. Bottom left, it is Suryu, a higher level player. And on the top right, it's gonna be Brock Daddy, another higher level player. APM check. 150 to 100 right now. We'll see how high it spikes here. So, this is the cheese compilation. If you want me to cast your cheese as part of the cheese compilation, send it to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com, the subject of cheese. I will get it into a folder. I'll send it to my screeners. Thank you very much, Jim and Stefan and Sniper Monkey, for screening for me for this month. I really do appreciate it. And everybody watching should appreciate you as well. So, the rules for cheese are no worker rushes unless it's something we haven't seen before. The higher the cheese, the more likely it's going to be able to get into the compilation. And what was it? Uh, what's the third rule? Uh, no, no, no. Worker rushes, higher cheese. Oh, in seven minutes or less. Unless the action continues through seven minutes and doesn't stop until the game is over, right? If you're hunting for pylons in a base race. That's okay. If it's in, if, like just a 10 minute replay of just a base race, thumbs up, all right? All right, so proxy hatch here from Brock Daddy. Are we SCV scouting, sir? You? Nope. Nope, indeed. Oh, so double gas opening, no expansion, no Reaper. What is going on here? Factory. Is this a battle cruiser rush? Uh All right. Um maybe it is. Maybe it's a one base battle cruiser play overlord cruising on in seeing what's going on. How's it going? You don't have a second base. Okay, well that's interesting. You're going to actually be able to deal with this proxy pretty effectively. There's that Roach Warren. Heck yes. Roach Warren double gas. Okay. So here's our problem. If this is battle cruisers, if this is banshees, this is gonna shut down and hard counter a roach opening big time for our guy, a Barack Daddy. Right? We've seen this in GSL recently. This is something that Rogue, no, Dark, Dark's actually been doing it in GSL. Rogue is still in military, but Dark's been doing it in GSL recently. Going for roach ravager openings against Terran, getting a lot of good damage done. And if he doesn't win the game outright, he will set the Terran player behind enough that they're in a terrible spot. So, where are we with this whole thing? Mm, yeah, no, no. Okay, hang on. Swapping Tech Lab, Hellions. Bio, okay, so bio openings. Oh, holy crap, I didn't see the Ghost Academy at all. I'm an idiot. Is it a new crush? <laughs> Cloaked Ghost New Crush. Rock Daddy's got his roaches in production here. He's got a couple lings. He's like, I mean, he has no idea what's going on. This looks pretty normal, right? Right? Just gonna make some Hellions, no big deal, nothing to worry about, and it's a ghost! That's what the Tech Lab's for! <gasps> you gotta have the Tech Lab to make ghosts! Alright, fine, so we're gonna get Personal Cloaking, I assume a nuke is next. Unless you're just using it to snipe... Queens? I mean, at this point, you don't know what's going on out here. This is both players. I mean, Suryu is a lot more blind than Brock Daddy is, let's be honest about that. Right, Suryu has not even attempted a scout. Has no idea what is outside of this front ramp. Doesn't know if there's a hatchery down building down here. I mean, it's not complete because there's no creep. But other than that, like, you don't know anything what's happening. So, is there going to be an armory? Okay, so yeah, some, like, Hellbat ghost thing. I kind of like this idea. I'm on board with this play for sure. Anything with ghosts I'm going to have a good time with. 100%. What? All right, here come the Ravagers, and there goes the Snipe Snipe! Two Ravagers down immediately, and Brock Daddy's like, wait, what? Ghosts at four minutes? You need detection, sir. Like, I appreciate you trying to get spines up, but I don't know if that's going to work out for you. Oh, another Snipe Snipe! Bam! And, wait, where'd the other ghost go? There you are. You have enough energy for Snipe? Oh, don't die, though. Do not die. Look at these hell bats. Look at this! That's a snipe on something here, right? Ah, yeah, those spines aren't coming up. Snipe takes, uh, oh, queen down. Nice. Good hit there. All right, so we are just back and forth here. Roach Ravager. 
versus Hellbat is honestly really good. It's the ghosts that are the problem here. You almost want some Zerglings to surround those ghosts and try to kill them. But also, dude, seriously, you need a lair in the worst possible way. Right now, there is no detection. No detection at all for the Zerg player. So if a ghost wanders up here, throws a nuke down, you can't do anything about it. Oh, this is bad news. That said, there are no ghosts. I mean, there are no nukes. So maybe Suri is not going nukes, which is a weird thing. But whatever. Yeah, snipe. Man. The explosion of Ravagers when they've been sniped is insane. Again, these Hellbats are not a problem for Roaches and Ravagers. Hellbats are intended to kill Lings. That's about it. They're pretty good at it. I mean, they're pretty good at killing buildings too, but like they can't kill Queens very well. They can't kill Roaches or Ravagers very well. It's just uh, there's a small, small list of things they're good against. And Lings, they're insanely good against, so that's why they exist. Suryu <laughs> says, bruh. Dude, this one base thing. Bruh, says Brock Daddy. Double cheese. That's right. We got some double cheese. Brock Daddy is not mining at all from the second base, so he's taking a real second base that is natural that he might actually put some workers at. Who knows? No, but for real, you know these are ghosts. Somebody better submit this. True NA style. Heck yes. NA style. APM 120 for these players. So, yeah. I mean, it's a good build. Both players are spending their cash. Honestly, I would stop making Hellbats at this point. Maybe start making Marines and Marauders instead. But, like, the barracks is for ghosts so yeah and like i said hellbat's surprisingly good at taking down buildings you think this design and the intent of the unit would be like you're bad against big chunky things but nope pretty good against against hatcheries and this is where brock daddy's like whatever i guess i'm gonna have a second base coming up back home uh second base is coming in from sir you now though so that's a big deal i love this creep tumor position it's kind of hidden it's gonna keep creep here for a while at least until it dies. So, armor value is 32 to 19 right now in favor of Suryu. Not great for Brock Daddy. Resources lost are 2,600 for Brock Daddy and 1,300 for Suryu. The ghosts are having a good time. They have no medevacs to heal them whatsoever, though. So, um, problematic. There's you know, A few of them have three kills. And at this point, you're not killing Lings. You're killing Queens, Roaches, and Ravagers. So, three kills is awesome. That's some effective stuff there. Um, Brock, where's your stuff, Brock Daddy? Uh, making some more Ravagers. Still down about 10 army supply, which is not great. What happened to him? Oh, Crucibiles, Lings. Like I said, Hellbat's great against Lings. Snipe, snipe. Two more Ravagers die. Yeah, just whittling away at the Zerg army with Dust Snipe. And I think that's it. We're done. GG. 40 to 24 army supply. Just dodge Crucibiles. Keep the Zerg player on one base. Well, you got a second base coming up back home, and that's it. You're done. GG, I would love to see a couple of medevacs, though. <laughs> so much. Uh, factory. Okay, so not a starport on the way. Not really concerned about healing up these ghosts at all. Um, I guess only three of them are injured, so it could be worse. They're doing a good job staying on the back lines. All right? These Hellbats are the ones tanking the damage. And you know what would be amazing is that or medevacs can heal Hellbats, too. So it'd be nice for everyone. Ooh, finally, at eight minutes. So he was like, we need a nuke. Do not go up this ramp. Just again, deny the natural. Deny the natural. Keep making SCVs. Enjoy your 29 to 26 worker advantage here. Maybe throw a scan down. See what you're dealing with. Is it did a spire happen? But I mean, a Terran player or a Zerg player on one base is just eh, the worst. The worst experience. Is he finally upgrading to a lair? Yeah, that's the thing. There's no detection here. You cloak a ghost. You cloak all these ghosts. You walk up this ramp. You win. I don't... <clears throat> Sir, you is just like... There's no way. Uh-oh. Ow. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. All right. That's why coming up the ramp is bad. Because you're going to take some corrosive biles, my friend. No, but seriously. You have cloaking. No. There are no... Oh, don't, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're invisible or not. Snipe is so good. Yeah, what a fun opening. What a fun opening game this was. GG, Sir you wins it. Our guy, Brock Daddy. No detection, it didn't matter. He just tried to go Roach Ravager and got countered hard by ghosts as an opening. Absolutely bonkers insane. Oh, now he cloaks some. See, look. Now he's just like, bam, ba, da, ah. LMAO, says Brock Daddy, GG. And that's it. Ha 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 ha.
Oh, awesome. Truly awesome stuff there. So resources lost, end of the day. Yeah, I'm 7,000 for the Zerg player, 3,000 for the Terran. Three ghosts died. There's still eight at the end of the game. And yeah, that's the funny thing is that I could have just cooked these ghosts, walked them up the ramp, killed everything. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, we're done. But, you know, I had to send some stuff up the ramp, lose a couple of ghosts, lose a bunch of hellbats that way. But, I mean, I don't know. What do you expect your turn opponent to have no detection at nine minutes? Like, seriously. It's not on Sir you. That's on Brock Daddy. Brock Daddy not having detection is so weird. And Sir you was just like, wait, what? And that was it. So, GG. Well done, Sir you gets the win with a weird, weird build. I love it. Hope you do it a lot on ladder because it's very fun. All right, cool. So that's game one. Let's keep this ball rolling. Game number two, Royal Blood, bottom left, Dr. Bell, top right, Hyper One, we know this guy. All right, man, PvP cheese is pretty much standard on the ladder. So if Dr. Bell is not prepared for cheese from Hyper One, I feel like that's his fault. Hit the like button if you're enjoying the cheese so far. I know it's only one game, and that game one was very, very, very fun. Do, 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 do. And hitting the like button just convinces the algorithm that people are enjoying the content and recommends the channel to more StarCraft 2 enjoyers. And yeah, that's about it. It's free. Just a little bit of energy for one of your fingers. Um, where, where are you? Is this a double proxy? This is not a cannon rush because there would be a forge coming up now. All right, so two gate proxy here inside the natural base of Dr. Bell. Wow! One gateway into double gas? Dr. Bell, what are you doing? Uh, I lied, everybody. It's a three gateway opening here from Hyper One. All right. Let's, I mean, cool. The problem with this double gas opening is that it insinuates that Dr. Bell is going to go for some kind of tech. And you know what the not the answer to a three proxy gate is? Four proxy gate is? It's tech. Tech is not the answer to it. Even if you can get like a void ray out, you'd think, oh, that stops a bunch of zealots, but then all of your probes die. And you probably can't kill them all before they, I don't know, like they wipe out your nexus, you know? So this is where Dr. Bell needs to be like, wait, what is going on? Quick, hard wall, second gate. I mean, that's not that weird. Uh, quick. Forge, we need cannons. Something bad is coming. Or, as they would say, something wicked this way comes. And what it is, is a bunch of zealots. Three zealots already on the way. Fourth zealot starting. Does he have the money for it? Yes. Four zealots on the way. Good. Dr. Bell, this is why you worker scout. This is why you do it. So that you know when this garbage is coming. He doesn't know what the garbage is. But he knows now, he knows it's probably Proxy Zealot because there's no gateways over here. So they're probably somewhere, he doesn't know where it is. Oh, and then Hyper One throws up a couple pylons. What? What is these pylons doing? Distracting is what they're doing. He doesn't have a forge, he can't put cannons there, but Dr. Bell maybe doesn't know that. Oh, oh, okay, so Stalker out, fine. Stalker takes 8,000 hits to kill a Zealot. Oh, and there's a shield battery. Hyper One, I think might just be dead. I mean, mm, shield battery out of shields, because it's not connected to a nexus. All right, hang on, Hyper One's in. Dude, why didn't he build a cannon behind the wall? Oh my gosh. Like one cannon behind the wall would have been incredible. I don't know that a stalker is what you want here. Again, it's like 18 shots from a Stalker to kill a Zealot. It is way too many. They are not meant to kill Zealots. They don't do bonus versus Zealots because Zealots are light and not armored. Stalkers are intended to kill armored stuff like roaches and marauders and things to end other Stalkers and Void Rays. Yeah, I mean, once this door is open and, and the army value is 24 to 4, yeah, you can micro your little face off, but eventually you're gonna lose a stalker oh this is a trap stalker ready oh gosh oh gosh summarily executed and that's your GG 28 to zero army supply hyper one four gate not warp gate four gates mass zealots GG hyper one gets the win 12 zealots man I mean that is a almost a flawless victory he did lose a probe and a pylon because he's doing shenanigans back here 
to distract Dr. Bell from what was going on at the front door. But, uh, yeah, rough. <laughs> Almost a flawless victory there from Hyper One. He lost no zealots. No zealots were harmed. Well, were killed in the making of this cheese. Way to go, Hyper One. Fantastic stuff. Not the last PvP we've got for you today. So, PvP enjoyers, stick around. Game number three is here on Arctic Dream. It's a 2v2 featuring these guys. We know them. It's Plays Badly and a Lion Cat. Bottom right team. It plays badly. The Red Terran. And we've got Lion Cat, our Zerg. He is blue today. And at the top side, the enemy. It is uh, Kagongor? Kagongor? Something like that. Uh, he's a Protoss and another Protoss. It is Kushmamba. So a Protoss team versus a Terran Zerg team. Should be a ton of fun. Pool first here from Lion Cat. Planning on being at least uh, possibly aggressive, possibly defensive. Right, one of these players are probably trying to cannon rush you. It's two Protoss, for heaven's sakes. Their plans cannot be good, right? One of them's going to be cheesing us. So, pool first, just to deal with any early cannons that find their way down to the southern portion of Arctic Dream. It'd be nice. All right, this probe, do we believe you're up to no good? Well, if that's a forge, it's not. Kengan Core is actually going for a double gate, no gas? What? Double gate, no gas. Double gate, okay, so one gas from Kushmamba. Oh, a gas here too, from Kangan Core. All right, so, I mean, two gate means pressure. Two gate, one base is definitely pressure of some kind. Kangan Core is throwing up a pylon over here, but that I mean, that might just be warping pylon. There's no forge here. Ling's on the move out from Lion Cat. Kushmamba's pinging over here being like, hey, what up? It's like, I don't know, man. What do you want from me? Someone's pinging here. I can't tell who. Whatever. So bottom line, Team South doesn't know this pylon exists. But they run across with Ling's hard walled though on both sides. Nope. Well, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, that part of the ramp was open. So these Urglings are like, okay, I mean, there aren't any Stalkers or Adepts back. Oh, no, it's not a hard wall. But I think a Zealot's going to come out in time to say, oh, two Zealots. But they actually have to save it, though. Okay, so they do. They're going to save that pylon. The Lings have to get out of there. Two Zealots are too much just for a handful of Lings to handle. It's about four Lings per Zealot, and that's even trades. That's not like, then I have Lings left over. Nope. Ooh, Purifier Skin Zealots. I love Purifier Skin. We need more Purifier Skin in our lives. Look at how cool their Psy Blades are. It's like X2 from the comics or from Logan, which is like the best X-Men movie ever made. It's not even fair really to compare them. Lion Cat scouting in, sees the Cyber Core, says, okay, great, that's not really that crazy. Warp Gate is on the way from Kushmamba, and, uh, yeah, we just got Zealots. Regular Zealots. Where'd the Purifier Zealots go? Guys, oh, here you are. You're just hiding in the darkness. So this is where, yeah, Spineslings Queens are going to be really good. Yeah, attack the Queen. Let her tank the damage, and then the Lings can do the damage. That's exactly what you want to do here. But then the Zealot gets wise and kills a couple Lings before dying. So, hey, that's better than nothing, I guess. All right, so this buys time for the Spines to come up behind uh, some Marauders. Marauders don't actually kill Zealots very quickly, but they're ranged, and Zealots <laughs> can't get through this wall, so that counts for something. So, yeah, here comes Kegangor being like, all right, everybody together now. Kushmamba, you too. The Marauders are like, pa-pow, pa-pow. All I got to do is repair here. This is just a Ling attack into a hard wall. Yeah, just repair a little bit. La la oh no, it's late on the repair. They got in. Ah, oh no. Uh, uh oh, this is a lot harder job for the Marauders now. Now they have to kite and they're taking hits instead of being safe and sound and because the repair was a tiny bit late. Oh, that hurts. Meanwhile, Lion Cat on the other side with a couple Lings. Maybe the Pylon's a better target, but he's turned too busy Trying to help his buddy out. Gosh, Zealots are inside the mineral line. Plays Badly's worker count. Going down. He still has the third most workers in the game. Oh, gosh. That's a 12 kill Zealot. 13 kill. What? 
14 kills, Zealot. No. He just killed like a full energy mule. Oh. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, plays badly down to 15 workers as a second base. Oh, there's a Zealot down here, too. Seven kills on it. Oh, gosh. So, 19 SCVs have died so far. No one else has lost a worker, but again, no one else has had a bunch of Zealots inside their base. Lion Cat trying to, like, help hold this. But, I mean, once again, the wall is back. As long as you can repair, you're going to be okay. Just This would have gone a lot better for Plays Badly if the repair had just been a little bit earlier. And maybe taking it a bit more seriously, sending more SCVs down for the repair. All right. So, yeah, this is basically the strategy that Hyper One is using in the last game. It's weird that they're back-to-back -back in the cheese comp entirely by random. Right? Slow zealot attacks? Like, this is weird stuff. Okay, fine. Finally, we're into stalkers from Kagan Core. Kagan Gore, sorry. Yeah, but two bases rolling from Lion Cat. Second base is up from Kagan Gore. Still the one base here from Kush Mamba. Spores need to be more useful, so they're going to tap down here, I guess. Here on the low ground, uh, oh boy. Army value, what do we got here? 53 to 55 versus 39 and 41. So more stuff here. Man, getting charged for these zealots would be like a game winning move. It really would. Uh, I'm getting a Stargate instead of getting a Twilight. So all right, Kushmamba's got double robo and researching charge. All right. I don't know if you want to wait for that, but. Uh-oh. Lion Cat does not have enough for this. At this point, a Baneling Nest really probably should have gone down. Do you know your enemy's been making a ton of Zealots? It's Banelings, dude. That's what you need. And that's your GG. Yeah, slow Zealots, Stalkers, and Sentries. That is what won this game today for Kagan Gore and Kushmamba. And major props to Plays Badly in Lion Cat for sending in a loss. I always appreciate that, right? Now, when we see their names next time, we're not going to be like, oh, they won. These guys, their ego is too big. They never send in losses. No, they totally did. They totally did it. And I appreciate you. Appreciate ya. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, nicely done. So, I mean, should it have worked? I don't know if this should have worked by Team Protoss, but it did. Again, a lot of that was the initial zealots making it in because of the, uh, the breach on the wall because their prayer was late. I know I was talked about that like... Eight times, but it was big. That was a big moment. Ghost comes out. I like the idea of a ghost. They trade pretty well against Zealots, especially, again, behind a wall. But Kagan Gore made things that can shoot past walls. So that's the GG. And yeah, Zerg player just... Has, uh oh, actually has a Roach Warren. Wasn't able to get any Roaches out in time, though, unfortunately. So that could have helped. Like, Roaches, yeah, in a position where they're not getting surrounded by Zealots or Charge Lots, as almost is the case here. And the Zealots kind of just, like, can't get that full surround off. It's like dealing with Lings. Just kind of position them here, here, maybe back here. And the Zealots are just, like, bouncing around impotently outside. That would be good, but no roaches for that. So, GG! Next up, I don't know. What do we have next? Let's find out together. We're on Gresfin. It's Mac Winston. Hey, what up, dude? Bottom right, Mac Winston. Top left, it is Stefan Stev. That's a fun name. I like it. I approve. Early probe is up to no good here by Mac Winston. Maybe it's going to be a cannon rush again. PvP, a very, very, very cheesy matchup. So, so, so darn cheesy. Cheesier than ZVZ, you may ask. I kind of feel like it is. So, oh, blue probe sees Mac Winston's probe. Very, very early, and this is going to be a proxy of some kind, not a cannon rush. Because uh, this is a little bit too far away to be a cannon rush. And there's not a forge coming up anywhere, so just proxy gates. Proxy gates again. Yep, there we go. Proxy one, proxy two. Popping up to see what to do. No gas. Is this another? What is this, the current meta? How is this the current meta making slow zealots? This is not okay. Am I, I missed some conversation. Holy crap. He's doing the same thing. No gas. Three gateways proxied over here for Stefan Stev. 
We have, I've seen more slow zealot proxies today than I have in like the history of my channel, I feel like. This is nuts. Ooh, look at this. Accidental scout of what's going on. And he's like, oh, this is going to be fun. Well, there is a forge from Mac, so he is going to try to get some cannons to supplement. And on the other side, it's just gateways from Stefan Stev. Um, so, uh, my goodness, place your bets, I guess? Who, uh, Mac Winston stuff is out faster. That's a big deal. They get two zealots in this mineral line and wipe it out while yours is still getting income for you? That's a game-winning situation. That's all it is. That's all you need. Oh, boy. Yeah, look at this. Two zealots, bam, income gone. Either you run or you die. Take a pick. Running. Running it is. And then you have to run. If you're going to run down here, you got to take some cannons to the face. Oh, this totally sucks. I think Mac, again, has just kind of won it. This little bit of no income for Stefan Stev, income for Mac Winston, allowing him to make more stuff than the blue Protoss. It's not like Mac Winston's not going to have the same problem going on here because he is. But he just had that extra, like, minute of money income. I guess he kind of spent it on cannons, though, which is a problem. I don't know that you need another gateway, Mac. Uh, okay, who has money to build a new Nexus? Nobody? Cool. So this has gotten exciting all of a sudden. Uh, the probes of Mac are running away, but uh, other than helping to fight, there's really not much you can do here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what getting gas does for you here, Stefan Stev. Do you have a cyber core? No? All right. Uh, neat. Oh, Mac. Oh, is he going to recall his pro recall? Oh, he recalls the zealots in. Everybody dance now. We're going to fight. Fight it up. But it's just, it's Mac. Again, two extra zealots. It was two extra zealots. And that's it. That's your ball game. His probes made it across the map. I don't know if that was even necessary to happen. I mean, Mac might as well recall his probes back home. It's over, though. Stefan Stev is dead. He's got a, a zealot remaining, but he's going to be... Com yep, there we go. He's going to recall his probes home, and we're back to getting income, baby. Yep, no nexus for the enemy. Total nexus for Mac. Oh no, my gateways have been depowered. How shall I win this game? Oh, because I have money and you do not? Is that what it is? Yes. That's absolutely positively what it is. Mac. <laughs> GG! Mac building a nexus on the enemy base. I mean, there was a zealot over here, right? No? Probes maybe you're fighting? I can't tell. I don't really care. GG, man. Yep. And that was it. That was it. Just a little bit faster with the proxy. Had a little bit more time to get some extra money out. And was just able to get into the uh, mineral line of Steph and Steph faster than Mac Winston had his mineral line compromised. And that was the difference. Very close. Very fun. Good send in. Thanks, Mac. Appreciate it. Woo. This has been a good cheese comp so far, hadn't it? Hyper One, he is back on Ancient Cistern. Top right, he's Terran this time. He's red. Bottom left, it is Broken, who is a Protoss. Hyper One came in random, very generously announced himself as Terran to let Broken know how to wall off and what build order he should open with. That was nice. There is an advantage to playing random, right? But who shall be the cheeser? Oh, we're cannon rushing a Terran? Oh boy, I don't know about this. Can Hyper One handle getting cannon rushed? Absolutely, it's Hyper One. He has cannon rushed a thousand hundred million times in his life. So he knows how to deal with cannon rushes from all different perspectives. And Broken's just like right here. This is it. This is where I'm starting my cannon rush. I'm throwing down the gauntlet in your natural base, Hyper One. And Hyper One's like, no, how about, no, don't do, let's get out of here. Shoo. 
Shoo, shoo, shoo. Don't be in this place. This is not a place for you. Oh, yeah. That probe's gonna die. Uh, not the best micro from Broken. And that's it. Okay, well. That's it, dude. Barracks is almost done. There's no gateway from Broken. Ah, uh, Broken didn't send another probe over to finish the cannon rush. Ah, uh, that's it. Like, there's... Uh, Broken is trying to make up for this fact by going for a Nexus after Forge. Which, okay, you know what? That's probably the smart move, actually. If you get wiped out, your cannon rush is immediately m just denied. Oh, proxy factory, though. Hold on. This is another Thor drop from Hyper 1, isn't it? Okay, so then you go for a Nexus first. <laughs> your gateway is still late. Your first gas is still late. Your general ability to handle a Thor drop is not very good at this point. Broken. Now, the thing is, this pylon would tell you that a Zerg player isn't expanding yet. It doesn't tell you Hyper 1's not expanding yet, because he could just build the command center inside the main. So, I don't know. It's decent in, like, no. The Terran is not expanding on the low ground. But he could be expanding up here, and you'd have no idea. Are we really... Wow, broken going for the... What? What? No, wait. Double factory. Okay. I mean, like... Anything could kill broken right now? He doesn't have an army. He has nothing. He's trying to do a horrible cannon rush. Now this is where you're kind of like, oh, there's still not a second base. Uh, okay, but seriously, is it Widow Mines? You're gonna try to walk walk Widow Mines into Broken's base? You have an armory? Uh, yes. Okay. You're just doing Widow Mine shenanigans. That's fine. Again, anything would kill Broken right now. Broken is spending money on cannons that help him in no way, no way at all. Oh. Yeah, you're getting, oh, and he's gonna lose the probe for no reason. Bad, bad, broken, terrible, terrible stuff. Here we go. Did he time this at all? Not really. Oh my gosh, broken genius. Oh, well, less of a genius. He doesn't lose all of the probes immediately to a widow mine, but that, dude, that armory, oh gosh, there it is. This widow mine is dead. Unless, nope. Oh, that was so close. The armory finished right as that Widow Mine died. You just park it in the mineral line, dude. Wherever. Dink. And free probe. Now you can go back to work, but you have to keep in mind there's a Widow Mine sitting here, and that totally sucks. That is, no. Now you need to be asking, where are these Widow Mines coming from? Hey, Broken asked the question. Quick, burrow in. Stalker. Flee. Okay. Uh, oh, getting a cannon in. Oh, gosh, these probes. You were so dead. Ah, good hit, good hit. Six kills, and, oh, Reburo. He's trying to, like, get a group here, but mm, Broken's a little bit, a little too on the nose. He's not, like, 100% on the nose, but he's fairly on the nose. Burrows in. Oh, oh, no, no. Six kills again. Up. Oh. And four kills there. And perma cloaked widow mines, man. Oh, a little, little aggressive there. But guess what? More widow mines continue to arrive. Okay, more cannons. More cannons. Hyper One, you're insane. This is almost just messing around. This is just like messing around levels of cheese at this point. Good. Ah, another good hit. Stalker down. You just can't lose stalkers like this. Oh, doof. Eight kills. It's 24 to nine workers. Cannon comes up. We reburrow somewhere where there aren't any cannons. We burrow like over here, maybe. Where there, and that's a GG. Hyper one gets it. Ha 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 ha. Broken with possibly the worst cannon rush I've ever seen, and into Nexus first, into, oh crap, there's Widow Mines all over my base, how do I stop this? And the answer was stalkers, and the answer was cannons, but eventually just make a robo. Make a robo, keep making stalkers, and you'll get there. But no, it didn't happen. Amazing, again, 2,000 to 700 resources lost there, good stuff from Hyper One. We got more Hyper One if you can believe it, I think you probably can actually, but yeah, hit that like button if you haven't already.
Hey, we're back with Plays Badly and Lion Cat on Emerald City, a very, very long running 2v2 map on the ladder pool. Top side, it's going to be a sick dilemma. A Red Zerg player with a Canadian flag spinning around his hatchery. And another Canadian flag here for Magic Fingers. They're from the Sokan clan. And on the south side, we've got Plays Badly and his Terran and a Protoss from Lion Cat now. All right, very fun. Very fun indeed. So, Emerald City. Walling off is uh, kind of hard. You need to wall this off. You need to wall this off uh, against Lings, but a Protoss and Terran team should be able to do that. But they're just going to wall off this wide ramp up to their main base. So, the one that they share. Sharing is caring. Ba-da-dum-bum, bum bum, bum, bum. All right, what's the plan here? Uh, sick Dilemma hatch firsting it. Cool. I support this. On this map especially, again, it's just easy to wall off. Early link pressure is not going to get a whole lot done. Not against a Terran Protoss team. And again, the walling capabilities of a Protoss Terran team are beyond anyone's imagination. Imagination. Whoa! Three hatch before pool? Dude, sick dilemma. That's like a name that I would have come up with in 1997 when I was like 14 years old. Just saying. Maybe sick dilemma is 14. Or maybe he was 14 when he made this name and now he's like 25 because that's how old StarCraft 2 is now. Fair. Yeah, three hatch before pool. Is this Somicron? Is this Somicron? Very well could be. Three hatch before pool and a 2v2. Absolutely crazy. He's going to get away with it, though. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see how much this one base play from Plays Badly. Well, we've got a second command center coming up. Whatever. It's kind of a one base opening from Plays Badly and Lion Cat. We're just going to throw that out there. If you want to support the channel, you can hit that like button. You can subscribe. I'm at patreon.com slash falconpaladin. Patreon only takes about 3% of your monthly pledge for upkeep and overhead costs. So that's pretty good. That's really good. YouTube, if you do a super chat here or become a member of the channel, I think they take closer to 30%, which is not nearly as good as Patreon. So if you want to support me, patreon.com slash falconpaladin is the best place to go. But some of you don't like Patreon. Some of you don't want to go to another site to support your YouTube creators. You just want to stay on YouTube, and that's fine too. I love my members on YouTube. I'm not. I, I, you're great. Like I appreciate the support from wherever it comes. And then the other answer is PayPal. I'm just at falconpaladin at gmail.com on PayPal. That is actually like pennies, man. It is nothing. You send me five dollars, I get five dollars. It's nice. So. Just, I like to throw the options out there sometimes if you're interested in supporting me. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook at slash Falcon Paladin. I like to post little highlights of my casts out there with a link to enjoy the whole thing if you're interested. So I guess it's not Twitter anymore. It's X, isn't it? So I have an X account. <laughs> anyway, check me out. Uh, X.com slash Falcon Paladin. I don't actually know how this works. Whatever. Uh, Proxy Robo over here for Magic Fingers. That's fun. This is a four hatch at three minutes from Sick Dilemma. Is it just like infinite ling flooding here? Lion Cat's got a dark shrine. I'm down with that. Where is it? Here it is. Here's the dark shrine hiding behind this tree. What a weird game. Okay, so basically Magic Fingers is one base proxying with Stalkers and Immortals and some Adepts. His Zerg teammate made four hatcheries, pulled off gas entirely, is getting speed, and is going to flood with about 30 drones. I, I mean, okay, I guess. I don't know. I think our guys might be dead again. Our heroes might not be able to handle this. This is some seriously good play from Team North. Yeah, the Immortals are going to chomp. Your stalker's down. Uh, these lings don't have speed yet, but they're pretty good against marines anyway if they're not microed well and if they don't have stim and they don't have combat shield and stuff. So, yeah. It's... Uh, oh, the DTs! Hold on! Hold on! The magic of the DTs might save everything or also might not save everything. 
Yeah, economically, the DTs can't really save everything, right? Plays badly, he's gonna lose all of his workers. Uh, the probes are fighting for Lion Cat. That's not gonna go well for you. Uh, GG. Lion Cat taps and plays badly. GG's too. What a weird build from Team North. Who expects a bunch of stalkers and mortals and adepts to show up at five minutes along with a bunch of zerglings? There's 51 lings out there with 15 of them dead. I. This is kind of inspirational. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that was just a one base, very optimized opener there for Magic Fingers. Against Plays Badly's attempt to get two bases up, and that's tough. You, oh, and he was going Battle Cruisers. Okay, so yeah, just kind of got hit before the Battle Cruisers showed up. That happens to everyone, you know? Like, sometimes you want to go for a build that's just kind of cheesy and you're trying to go for something that's a little higher tech and then you get hit at five minutes and you die. That's it. We've seen that. We've seen that all over the channel. <laughs> so, uh, tough. Tough lesson to learn there. Man, I feel bad for Plays Badly and Lion Cat. They kind of just got boinked. In both their games that were sent for this month. But uh, I like the DT. I mean, look, the DTs were undefeated. The DTs were great. The DTs had something... I don't know. They were combining for kills and stuff, right? Wait, hold on. Did the DTs totally die? Yep. What killed the DTs? Hold on. Is there an Observer out? Oh my gosh, he brought an Observer. Well, yeah, because he had a Robo. Why not? Oh, man. Yeah, I thought the DTs were going to be able to... Uh, Again, they were not going to win the game. But they were going to wreak mighty havoc upon everybody from Team North. But then an Observer shows up. The DTs are like, see you later, Immortal. And then, yeah, then the Ops comes in from the North. And, uh, yeah. That's it. Lion Cat's like, all I had were those DTs. GG. And he GG'd out, which is cool. Appreciate it. Appreciate the good manner there, guys. All right, so well done. That was awesome. So I, we just have more cheese. You're looking at the clock. You're like, we are not. We are not at the end of the cheese compilation yet. We've only had like six games, and you are right, good viewer. You are correct. Let's do more of Le Fromage. Royal blood. It's more hyper one. Top right, N bears, and in the bottom left, hyper one. He's tearing. Did he come in random? Is he going to announce that he's random here to end? Ba oh, not bears. Beer. bear -a. Something like that. I don't know. It's beer with an, N an E on the end of it and an N at the beginning. I don't know why. What else is going on? Uh, oh, I totally uh, Barbenheimered over the weekend. I went and saw Barbie on Saturday and Oppenheimer on Sunday. By golly, I enjoyed them immensely. So good. One thing I'm going to point out, okay? There's a lot of, like, discussion about these movies on a meta-textual level. And I'm going to say, Oppenheimer is, like, an ultimate dude movie. Like, I'm not saying that women can't enjoy it, okay? But I'm saying it is created to be appealing to dudes. Nice wall-off, by the way. And I enjoyed it a lot. And Barbie is a ladies' movie, Okay? And again, I'm not saying dudes can't enjoy it, because I also really enjoyed Barbie. Ooh, and beers down here, piloning. But they are intended for those audiences. These are not general audience films, okay? So when I hear dudes be like, Bah, Barbie, what's that garbage? I get it. It's not for you. And women going Oppenheimer, that doesn't look fun at all. Right. It's not for you either. And again, this is not a men versus women thing. There are plenty of dudes who are like, Oppenheimer looks super boring. And there are plenty of women who are like, Barbie doesn't look appealing to me at all. Right? But I'm talking about generalities. There are generalities at play here. And I'm just going to tell you, it is possible for a person to enjoy both. And I did. They are very different films. Barbie is hilarious. Almost non-stop hilarious in a way that Oppenheimer is not. Barbie has some messaging that has to do with the state of women in our current world and some problems that they have, and there is some resentment towards men that comes out in the messaging of the film. But you know what? Again, it's a movie for women. So, like, I didn't sit there and get mad about it. 
do I agree with some of the messaging in the film? No, but I really enjoyed 90% of the film. I again laughed my head off and I enjoyed it a lot. Oppenheimer, again, fantastic. I thought maybe the last 45 minutes, I'm not sure why it's in the movie. Maybe someone else who's seen it will know what I'm talking about. But that's my Barbenheimer review. I liked them both a lot. They're both flawed in their own ways. Oh, and Florence Pugh is wasted in Oppenheimer. That's my other take. Okay, okay. See? I can say good things and bad things about both. But uh, I really heavily, heavily enjoyed both films. And I'm happy to see them doing well. So, Proxy Gateway. Here from Enbear. I'm going to try to get through this wall. Uh, oh, and look at everybody's favorite unit. Hyper One's favorite unit is Widow Mines. There's at least one subscriber of mine here for StarCraft 2 who's just stopped playing StarCraft 2 once Widow Mines came out. I think in Heart of the Swarm they were, yeah. Heart of the Swarm they were introduced, and my sub was just like, no, I'm out. Get this one. Yeah. All right. And Bear figuring out. Figuring out how to deal with these Widow Mines. Okay, so he eats. Fine. To kill a Widow Mine, we'll eat it. That's okay. But guess what's coming? The armory is coming, friends. The armory. Oh, gosh. What? Um. Maybe don't take the hit for all of your stalkers there. <laughs> it's got to be so frustrating. Hyper One's proxying a barracks on the other side of the map. He's just going to, like, walk some Marines over here and just win. I feel like that's the play. Get this pylon, and it's over. It's over. Oh, the armor is done. Cyclone on the way. Ooh, Magfield Accelerator coming in, too. And, ooh, nice snipe on the reactor. Can't double pump Widow Mines anymore. Good luck. Ooh, getting rid of Macfield Accelerator would be cool. These stalkers are playing with fire. They're playing with so much fire. Dude, get the other one. Uh, he's just eating Widow Mine hits because, eh. I have more than you, dude. That Cyclone. Ow. I was going to say it needs to die, but you just took too many stalker hits. And now you can't kill the Cyclone. You don't have enough stalkers. And I mean, it's hard enough to do it if you don't have Blink, which you don't have Blink. Because who's getting upgrades in today's world? Not anyone um, who's Protoss, anyway. Oh, he is going for Twilight Council. It's like, when behind Dark Shrine. Oh, crap. Marauders have showed up. All right, here goes. Ow. Ow. Again, this is a bonus versus armored versus bonus versus armored. So, Stalkers hit as well as Marauders do here. If they have Stim and slow, then the stalkers are in trouble. But just regular stalkers versus regular marauders, it's about an even fight. Whoever has more of them is generally gonna win. Magfield Accelerator, here he is supply blocked, thanks to this supply depot dying. Super annoying stuff. I don't know why there are SEVs out here, but he's just kind of focusing on the other side of the map where he's using the Cyclone to take down a Nexus. <laughs> Fun. I mean, when you're dealing with cloaked widow mines, you do want to get a robo up eventually, but until then, you just kind of have to accept. Kind of accept what we're dealing with here, and it's just, it's invisible splash damage units that can hit air and ground. Yes, they suck. Yes, everyone hates them. Yes, there's a reason people don't like Terran players, and it's basically widow mines. I love this little cyclone that could. I'm going to take down a Nexus all by myself. At least split. Ow, you lost a sentry for no reason. Ooh, cyclone does die. Very nice. Okay, Blink's on the way. So Nabir understands what he needs to do here is get Blink. Nice. Maybe make a robo. Hey, Nabir's getting in there. It's taking him some time, but he's going to make it, I think. Nice. Focusing down. There you go. Focusing down Marauders. Ah, it's not splitting off. Okay. Oh. Well, I think that's it. That's your GG. His complete inability. Ugh. Complete inability to split Stalkers off so only one of them gets hit rather than their entire group. All of them get hit. That is how... 
You deal with widow mines if you can't stop them from firing with stuff like, I don't know, siege tanks or ravagers or like hydras or something that outranges them, you know? I like it. Prioritizing the widow, kind of prioritizing the widow mines, not entirely. Not all the way. Ooh, again, this pylon is a big one. It's been a big one for a while. And Enbeer's like, I have Blink now. Oh, I took a Widowmine hit. Uh, Blink doesn't protect me from anything. Oh, it's a three kill Widowmine up here. Not Nothing bad. Hyperwood is not expanding. You'll note, he's on one base. He's starting to mine out at eight minutes because you mine out fast in StarCraft 2. That pylon dying is a big freaking... Okay, well, all three warp gates are out. This one's still here. You can still warp in one thing at a time. Is he really not going to rebuild a pylon? Oh, gosh. Ow. How many stalkers have died? 24 stalkers have died? That's your GG. Hyper One gets the win. 24 stalkers died. Look, two cyclones and six marauders went down. Eight widow mines. Not nothing. But holy crap, that was a lot of stalkers that died there. 5,000 resources lost to 2,000 resources lost. Yep. Cost-effective stuff. Good micro. Everyone's APM was pretty impressive. Yeah. 268 currently, an average of about 200. Hyper One's playing fast. He's playing smart. He has some good micro on display these days. I like what Hyper One's doing to improve his game consistently. He looks good. Continues to look good. So... Yeah, Widow Mines, his favorite unit of choice and his cheese this month, and it's working for him. So, one more final cheese replay of the cheese compilation for July 2023. Hit that like button if you haven't already, yeah? It's Hyper One again, very Hyper One-centric cheese comp this month, which is fine because they are always fun, bottom right. It is Flip Flappers. Is this... Is this the shocked gopher meme? What was it called? Man, 2007 was so long ago. Uh, somebody remembers. They'll tell me in the comments. Top left, it is Hyper One. He's got Terran. Did he say Terran? Nope, just said good luck, have fun. So I don't know if he's randoming here. Or if he's just going for Terran because he wants to make Widow Mines so, so, so bad. Is this just him bullying Protoss players with Widow Mines today? It's like Protoss are winning with slow lots or dying to Widow Mines. That's what Protoss has done today. I guess there was that one Protoss who made some immortals. That was cool. <laughs> all right. Proxy two racks at least here. Maybe three. That's an SCV, all right. What's the play? Flip Flapper's not going Nexus first, which is nice. God, what is that meme? This is driving me crazy. I'm going to Google it real quick. Uh, shocked rodent meme. See, Google knows what I'm talking about. It's just called Dramatic Chipmunk. Okay, fine. Is it Dramatic Chipmunk? Like artsied? Art styled? That's cool. This is very cool. Behold, a bunker coming up in full view of Protoss. Like, Flip Flappers had no chance of not seeing this, man. Ooh, throwing up a supply depot to kind of protect him against the probe attacks until the Marine shows up? This is weird. I like it. Little proxy bunker Marine thing against Protoss. How cool is that? Oh, gosh, these Zealots. Oh, no, the Zealot is shutting this down. I'm not sure if this bunker finishes is gonna. Oh, okay, well, Zealot, three three SCVs down. Bunker not finished. Uh, do we run? Do we further commit? 
do we send another uh send another scv we do send another scv oh gosh come on come on oh no he stopped it no he let the bunker finish he could have killed the scv see again this is not in range of anything so it doesn't matter like, okay, neat. You can mess with people that come down this ramp. But Flip Flappers is one basing anyway, because he knows you're one basing. Uh, oh, yeah, Marine wasn't inside the bunker, so he died. SCV wasn't inside the bunker, so he died too. Now we have Shield Battery Stalkers burning down a bunker. This is very Brood War of you. Oh, look at him attacking his own bunker. Oops. Oops. Void Ray gonna try to shut this down. So when I say Brood War, I just mean the Dragoon, which is the Brood War version of the Stalker. Dealing with bunker pressure is like very common in TVP. Okay, uh, bunker dead, prismatic alignment, make sure of that. Void Ray not actually very good at killing Marines. But four Marines aren't gonna kill it very quickly. Yeah, all right, this is getting interesting now. This is getting super crazy interesting now. Army value, 9 to 8. That's 4 minutes. This is the kind of stuff that I like. Voidray says, where is this proxy? Let's go look for it. No, you know where it is. He's going for aggressive purposes up this left side. That's what he's in for. Pull in the boys. Let's go pull in the boys. All right, Hyper One, can you get it done through a pulling the boys maneuver? I mean, yes, I think that's going to do it. The boys are going to provide a ton of buffer. This stalker is going to die. This stalker is going to die. The Voidray is not even here. The Voidray, I don't know where the Voidray went. Oh, it's up here, killing Hyper One's main base. But the boys are gone, so it doesn't really matter. All right, here goes nothing. Yeah, we done. We're done. That's it. The Void Ray's not helping with this battle. Not that it really matters anyway. The SCVs are better fighters than probes are because they can't heal themselves. Ooh, Oracle tries to help. Marines say no. Unupgraded Marines are good units. And uh, shield battery, maybe? No, focus the shield battery. Nice job, Hyper One. Now we're done? Worker count is 9 to 1, but all of Hyper One's SCVs are over here. It's like depowered. No, another Oracle came out. We have enough Marines to handle that. Why are you even trying this? That was terrible. That was terrible. Oh, and a couple Stalkers were to come out, but now it's all depowered. And this Void Ray is trying to base race everything to the moon, but that's not going to happen. It's over. It's done. How is there eight army supply? It's, a Void Rays are not eight army supply. Oh, that's right. He's got some stuff in the gateway, in the queue, and that's taking up supply, but it's a lie. See, now it's down to six because he canceled some stuff. That's what it is. So we're base racing now, but that Void Ray can't kill these Marines. So GG, Hyper One wins. <laughs> that was crazy. That was really crazy stuff. GG indeed. So, Hyper One just kind of went in here. I mean, I will point out that Hyper One has sent in a lot of losses before because he's cool. He didn't send in any losses this time. Though that's okay. Maybe he did. They just didn't get chosen by the screeners. I should be fair. I should be fair. Anyway, good job, Hyper One. That was fun. I just all, all sorts of cheese today. We had Slow Zealot cheese. We had Proxy Bunker cheese. We had Widow Mines up the wazoo types of cheese. Man, we had Proxy Hatchery and Ravagers. We had a Ghost Rush. What else do you want from cheese compilations, right? This was fantastic. So, awesome, super, ultra, mega, lightning, fun cheese compilation for you this month. And that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a cheese compilation. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.